going to deep dive into back into data and social media and those uh, hot topics like pharmacovigilance, right? Uh, and other um, how we start to use all this data we're collecting. And uh, for those of you who don't know Siva, I've had the pleasure of knowing him for many years in his pre IQVIA days. Yep. Uh, Symantoli, which is now part of uh, IQVIA, which I'm still going to call IMS. So, uh, <laughs> And he's going to take us through not only how data as an asset has been changing, but how we're using that data and uh, what's ahead in the coming years. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So and uh, yep. down to go up. Oh, down to go up. Yep. Okay. All right. So those of you are from, not familiar with IQ, we have the name uh, IMS Health and Quintas, the CRO, and Sejidim came together and became IQ. Yeah. And all of you have a nice little report on your desk about social. But my presentation today about a nice little story how digital safety and LMR and local country affiliates came together and got a win-win-win situation which rarely happens. So that's the story I'm going to talk, walk you through. So this is one interesting, of course, a large pharma company where we have the typical problem of one little country somewhere on the globe wanted to do some innovative digital thing, right? They have a nice little idea and they were told no. <coughs> and another country somewhere in uh, LATAM comes up with a beautiful idea of a nice little digital campaign, a digital interaction, and they were told no. Then comes China with a beautiful idea, they have a nice little interaction, they were told no, right? So when all of them were told no, they all came together and said, how can we solve this problem? So this required interesting collaboration between safety, LMR, digital, and also the local affiliates. And who's going to pay for all of these things, right? <laughs> the most interesting application. So the important question was governance. How do you govern these patient engagement ideas that these little countries have? And how do you govern it from a central location, a headquarters in the US, right? I mean, the ideas, you may ask, what are these ideas? Some of, some of them are pretty simple. I need an email box where patients could email to, to the farm company, or I need an email box where my rep can communicate back to a patient who has hemophilia. Okay. Very simple, because reps sometimes have a relationship with patients when they're helping in a country. And the other one could be, I need to start an, a Facebook page, or I want to have a Facebook ad with comments enabled, or I want a Twitter handle, I want to launch an app, I want to use WeChat to communicate with my doctors, or I need to use text to communicate with my patients. Very simple things, but they were told no, right? Because they needed a governance in place. Then the other important question is, if you want to put governance in place, it has to be win-win who is going to pay for this governance so that these guys can go ahead and do this stuff, right? It has to be win-win, otherwise nobody wins. So these are the three groups came together. Safety and the digital office, the digital marketers like yourself, and the local country affiliates. These are the guys who are actually running these programs, right? And how did we solve this issue? So now think about it, right? You have even once one country came and tells you that I need to have my sales rep enable simple notes capturing in their CRM system, which said they were told no because of all the compliance issues, right? So very basic interactions with the physician and, and patients because of the governance issue, they were told no, right? So this is the only slide I have talking about my product. So we put something called AE track, which IQ we have, right? which connects to your digital properties in real time. So this could be your chat, this could be your Facebook page, this could be your Twitter, Twitter campaign. It could also be your sales reps CRM system, Viva, our own uh, our OCE. Or it could be simply an email box and an exchange server, right? You bring all of them into the system, again, I don't want to overuse the term AI, it uses AI, it means Google AI. And it pulls in the information, and we have data collected about, going back to my time in Samantha days, about 
a billion transactions of patient and HCP conversations, powering this AIA tracker. And what it does is it throws out potential signals coming from these countries, right? It could be an adverse event reported in China, or it could be an off-label communication that happened in Brazil, or it could be a kickback discussion or a, or a bribery discussion that sometimes happens in some countries, right? That happens. All of them are captured by this tool. It goes to a command center which is locally powered by local affiliates who have local uh, native speakers. So we take the burden away from the marketers and we take the burden away from the reps and the ones who are communicating with these uh, patients and physicians. And this entire platform is carried out. So they are being free to do everything but with the monitoring and governance in place. Right. So what is the outcome of this? So some interesting win-win-win situations came up, right? First of all, safety got what they wanted. Safety, if you are following the safety space, MHRA, the, the UK's government agency, can go and audit Brazil, it can go and audit Malaysia, it can go and audit any country. That's the authority they have, even if you can do that when it comes to safety. So if you fail to report an adverse event in a Facebook page in China, if you can still bring it. Right? So that's how it is. So they got what they want, and they also got something interesting on top of it. So if you, if you know the safety space, the invalid adverse events you probably know. You don't meet a patient in the report for a drug and a side effect, it's an invalid case. So the FDA doesn't want it. But you still need to capture it to find out safety signals, right? So if you, that's still a cost for you. So majority of the social media cases are invalid cases, but still it's a cost for safety. They have to still pay a vendor somewhere in India to process that case, it costs about $25 to $30 per case. Think about a million cases coming in for a large pharma company that are not really real cases, but still invalid cases, you still end up spending a lot of money. So what we did with this tool, we did the signaling before it goes to the case process. So this, this entire platform became also a signaling tool for invalid cases. Saving safety a ton of money. Again, if you talk to safety guys, they don't have a lot of money. They really, really don't have money. So if you really becoming a champion, digital marketers, to help safety save money, and they're really gonna help you launch new programs. So that's one of the nicest win that happened. Right? The second one, of course, you digital, now you get enough credibility now because you have convinced your LMR and your safety guys so that your brands can launch stuff in these countries. So you become a real good champion and you could just do a lot of interesting challenge talk for video and you could do a lot of interactive ones with comments enabled. Then the countries, the biggest ones, who are gonna pay for this, right? They're the ones who are gonna pay for these programs. It's not the headquarters, it's not the safety. The countries who are running these programs are gonna pay for it. And they were happy to pay for it. They were happy to pay for it because you took the burden away from them of reporting these adverse events, reporting these other, uh, other compliance risks, and also you're saving them money because it typically costs them extra to do that extra monitoring. Right? And if you get caught not doing it and the cost of safety issues, you probably know, right? You are all over the news for not reporting one single adversary. So it was an interesting working together model, right, by putting this in place. And we were able to launch 200 patient support program, digital patient enablement programs in 25 countries with this governance in place, right? So that's a big success. Not that these programs just popped up all of a sudden. Some of them were already there. Some of them had Facebook pages from 2010, but the headquarters found out and they added up some of them. So you probably do a scan, you find out some apps popping up that you don't even know. So these were digital apps, social media properties, social listening programs, social command centers, and also text programs, and also enabling notes on a simple CRM system, right? So that reps can capture the interaction, which was disabled in many cases we all follow the CRM, CRM space. Then simply email. So you bring all of them together. Now the next question comes up, okay, you're doing all these programs, how do you measure whether these are working? One of the biggest questions we have in the digital 
how do you know that everything that you're doing is making a bottom line impact, right? So IQBF, traditionally people I am as hell, you have sales data, you can't use sales data simply, <laughs> because your sales guys are gonna come and say, hey, I impacted the sales, not your marketing, right? I'm sending reps to the people. So how do you prove? So for that, we came up with something called an index. An interesting index where we take in four, cons four different components. One, we look at simple digital activity, like social mentions and sentiment, very basic stuff. But we also, we went into search activity. So we look at Google searches and Bing searches to find out how many searches are happening, right? And the most important fact, my favorite, <laughs> you probably know I'm part of the Wikimedia Foundation, Wikipedia business, right? You probably won't, I don't know whether you're measuring that, 60 to 70 percent of your online searches, although you have a beautiful website, goes to Wikipedia, right? So we look at Wikipedia and we look at the content and that would give you a good measure about some interesting trends. So we took that into consideration. So Google search, web, your website traffic onto your website and digital activity. We also look at scientific activity. How much publications, new publications popping up? If you're following a publication trend, the publications are growing 2,000% in Chinese, the diabetes alone, versus 200% in English. So you, have, you can see what's going on in the publication space, which is also becoming social, given what we saw last night, right? So we look at that, and we take into consideration these three facts, and also on top of it, we throw in traditional IMS data, and came up with this index, so that you could prove ROI, to see whether your campaigns are really impacted. Because you can't simply take sales data and show because you will have a fist fight with your, with your sales force, right? So here are some examples. So this is the digital index. So for some brands, we calculate in a month go month over month basis. You can uncheck sales data if you want, but it's included. It gives you much better, uh, much better view into your sales and how your ROI is working on your digital campaign. So you could track them on a month over month basis. And here is an interesting example. We could also do this, the, this, this particular index could also become a detection or an early warning signal where we could prove some brands. It can predict, not in every brand, it can predict in some brands what is gonna happen much earlier because things that happen on Wikipedia, things that happen on search, of course on social, and also in publication space, could all put together, could predict a lot of interesting things that may happen, right? We have shown switching behaviors, changing six months earlier using this type of data. And here is the index becoming an ROI tool, right? So here's an example for one of the brands where it shoots up really high, normally during a conference time because you are having so much online activity like ASCO, and suddenly drops a few months later. When you really dig deeper into that, you'll find some interesting things, right? And you could really use this in combination with sales to show whether you're digital campaign is impacting the bottom line. So here, typically what your problem has always been, how do I, how do I decouple from my sales and show whether my campaign is impacting the bottom line, right? You throw all these activities, a sales rep alone cannot change the other factors that I show in the index, which is Wikipedia visits, online search, and social media. But your campaign, your digital campaigns might have uh, there's a high probability that it might have changed all this. So I think we basically basically also patenting this whole thing because it's an interesting thing to put all these all these different factors into one index to help the digital marketer measure your campaigns in a much more scientific way rather than simply throwing website visits at the bottom of the menu, right? So this index we're establishing like an IQPA index, which also contains the IMS sales data underneath. So it will help you measure your digital campaigns. And that's basically what we're presenting. And we will be here for questions. And going back, this collaboration is something that you all should try to do. And if you throw everybody something, like especially safety, given how much pressure they are in, saving money, and you'll get a lot of things approved <laughs> to go into. Because normally we go with a problem to them. Why don't we go with a solution to them and give them something, right? And they are willing, they will be willing to work with you. Sorry, finish my film. Thank you.